of International Women's Day uh, on March 8th, Choose to Challenge is the theme. A challenge world is an alert world. And from challenge comes change. So let's all choose challenge. Before I introduce our prestige panelists and moderator, let's turn on your videos and raise your hands in solidarity to celebrate women's achievements, raise awareness against bias and take action for equality. Craig will be taking a screenshot. So please leave your hand up for a moment and smile. Thank you, you can all lower your hands. We handpicked our panelists today to bring you thought leaders whom during their careers have challenged status quo. Today, they are role models helping others become leaders for the future. Let me start with Bonnie DuPont, a well-known renowned executive coach and board chair. Bonnie lectures in the director's education program offered by ICD, Institute of Corporate Directors, and is the past chair and board of, a board of directors at the University of Calgary. She also serves on the board of NAV Canada, Calgary Opera Society, and BIRD. Bonnie Dupont was named to the top 100 most powerful women in Canada list each year from 2001 to 2006. In 2007, she was inducted into the top 100 Hall of Fame. In 2008, she was presented with an honorary Doctors of Law from the University of Regina. In 2011, was presented with an honorary Bachelor's Degree in Technology by SAIT. Finally, she was inducted into the Alberta Order of Excellence in 2019. A trailblazing executive who stands out for her endless contributions while opening doors for others. Jennifer Corey, an inspiring executive and board director. Jennifer has over 35 years with global organizations, holding various senior executive positions, including Vice President of Human Resources with BHP Billiton. Prior to that, she was Vice President of Corporate Services for Enterplus and held various senior management positions with Imperial Oil. Jennifer Corey serves as a board director for Crescent Point Energy, Calgary Zoo, Women in Mining, and the Dean's Advisory Council at the University of Alberta. She was appointed chair for the first public-private partnership for UN Nations Women GICC program. Based in New York, this program is a group of 25 global companies and institutions supporting and empowering women and girls in innovation. Her leadership style inspires others to learn from exam through example while holding themselves accountable to a higher standard. Shannon Peston, a passionate advocate, entrepreneur, and CEO, Shannon is a founder and CEO of Peston Consulting, an Indigenous owned, purpose driven consulting company that focuses on advancement of women's entrepreneurship in Canada. As a Métis woman, she strives to promote economic reconciliation through her work. Shannon brought women's entrepreneurship to the forefront of ATB Financial, where she created the ATB Built Her Business Crowdfunding Program, a program that was recognized by Women's Entrepreneurship Knowledge Hub as an emerging funding model in Canada. She was recognized as a She Innovator by She Innovates Alberta and a finalist for the Diversity Ambassador of the Year Award by Women in Finance. She is on the board of Mount Royal University and the chair for Women's Entrepreneurship Day in Canada. Her passion to advocate for inclusion, innovation and entrepreneurship drives her focus to close that gender gap. We are excited to announce our moderator, Catherine Brownlee, a fellow Rotarian, a well-known for her thought-provoking podcast, Cat's Track. Catherine Brownlee, a president and CEO of the Con Connect, is the connector of all connectors. Catherine has been the co-author of three bestsellers, Want to Work in Oil and Gas, Cat's Tips, How to Get Your Job of Your G Dreams, and How to Sell Any Economy. It, I have no doubt that Catherine, as our moderator today, will create an invigorating, raw, and thought-provoking discussion with our panelists today. Now over to you, Catherine. Thank you, Maxine. And hello, fellow Rotarians and friends. It is my absolute honor to moderate this amazing panel of inspirational leaders here in Calgary and unfortunately feeling very blessed to know each one of them in different capacities and always looked up to them and all of their great feats. So I'm honored to be here. We are going to have a very casual conversation. Uh, we've got a list of questions that have been, that are going to be for everyone, but also some specific questions for each one. And they, 
full transparency. They've received them in advance. So um, they're aware of what, what's coming, which is great. So we'll, we're all well prepared. Thank you again. So I would like to start with Bonnie DuPont. Bonnie is someone that I always looked up to and, and my dad too. I know dad, you, you never knew dad. Bonnie, but uh, he used to come into the petroleum club with me. And, and of course, once women were finally allowed. And when you became president, we were there for breakfast one day. And he says, who is this Bonnie DuPont anyway? <laughs> anyway, I was so proud of you. And I'm always proud of you. And I'm, I'm grateful for your service. I'd like to start with a question for you. Please describe one or two things that you feel launched your career or maybe sustained it. Uh, well, first of all, Catherine, thank you for that uh, kind comment, and uh, I I do appreciate um, I do appreciate the introduction. Um, when I think about uh, my career uh, writ large, if you will, and the things that might have made a difference in my career, uh, two things come to mind. Uh, one is that I was very blessed right from the get-go as a young woman starting out in business to have very good mentors. And, um, you know, I, I talk about this every opportunity that I have. Uh, first of all, expressing my gratitude for those mentors, but also really encouraging each and every person to be a mentor or to find a mentor. So to me, it was the, the whole concept of mentorship, having a sponsor, having someone who really saw in me things that I didn't necessarily see in myself and then helping to nurture those things and and guide me to utilize those qualities so you know number one for me is mentorship if i were to identify a second thing that's been very important in my career it's been overcoming my own anxiety about trying new things and i think it's very natural i think you know, we all think, oh, can I do that? Somebody wants me to do something, but am I qualified? Can I really pull it off? You know, what if I fail? Mm -hmm. I, I had to work very hard to overcome that sense in myself. I was, I was raised in, in quite a protected environment in a way. I was raised on a farm. I didn't have a lot of um, contact uh, socially with other people, and I and I didn't have a lot of confidence, so I had to overcome that. So the the second piece is um, the the willingness to take a risk, the willingness to say, okay, I'm going to try this, I'm going to give it my very best shot, and um, and hope and pray <laughs> that it works out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So and those are two things that are important to me that have been awesome. important. That's awesome, Bonnie. Wonderful. And isn't it true that no one gets anywhere without everyone? Very true. Hmm. Very, very true. That's yeah. awesome. I'm glad you had mentors. We have a wonderful city. What great citizens here always lifting each other up. Exactly. That's exactly true. Thank you, Bonnie. And Miss Jennifer. I am very interested to hear a unique experience you would have had as a woman specifically in leadership. Well, thanks, Catherine. And thanks to the Rotary Club for doing this. Uh, I, I think this is just a phenomenal um, panel of women. I'm an honored to be part of it. I've known Bonnie and Shannon for a while and I, I feel honored to be part of this. Um, in thinking about this question, um, and there's a theme to some of my answers, I would tell you, um, I, I, would, I would share this experience. Um, I uh, recall a time in my career when I was a senior executive and we had just laid off about 30% of our, uh, I had a team of about 150 and we um, laid off 30% of them and the context of the meeting was gathering all the remaining folks together and 
you know, talking about the vision going forward and how we're going to uh, proceed um, and, and, you know, trying to build morale after this horrendous event. Um, and when I got to the part of the presentation where I said I'd like to honor those that have left, that have left our fold as a team, um, my throat caught and I started to get quite teary. And you know, in all the business books and all my business learning and the BCom program I went through, everybody said, you know, in a time of crisis, the leader has to be calm and unemotional and, you know, put a good face on. And that was kind of my training at Exxon as well. And um, I caught myself and I went and finished the presentation, but I had a Q&A after um, with the team. And one of the very first questions or comments is one of the members stood up and said, Jen, I just want to thank you for your authenticity. Mm -hmm. um, not many leaders would cry mm -hmm. in front of their team. And that really meant something to us. And they all stood up and clapped. And I, I, even now I get kind of teary um, and, you know, the lesson for me around that is um, one of the greatest gifts, I think, people, it, it's probably not just a uniquely female story, but people in general really, really appreciate authentic leaders, mm -hmm. people that just are authentic and show emotion. And, you know, I was taught to never do that in business. And uh, that was a big lesson for me. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. And you are truly authentic, my friend, in every move you've ever made. That's how I see you always. And you're right. Authentic leadership is so important. And yeah, you definitely are that. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. And Ms. Shannon, this has been a challenging year. What have you learned about yourself and or your business during this time? Well, hi, Catherine, and so great to see you. Um, I know I tell everyone that you were one of my first mentors when I first came out of university, and I often think back to everything that I've learned from you. So thanks um, for inviting us to the conversation today, and thanks to the Rotary Club of, of Calgary downtown. I really appreciate being in here. Um, but you're right, it's been an incredibly challenging year. And um, I think for me, when I think about this question, I, I kind of think back to a period about just over a year ago where I was working at ETB, I was the um, director of the women's banking at ETB. And I had this feeling that I needed to step out on my own. And when I think about it being a challenging year, I never would have thought that come June, I would have in a global pandemic, left the comfort of um, what felt like a very safe place of employment to go off on my own. But I think we really learn who we are in tough times. I think uh, the beauty of entrepreneurship as well for me has been this journey of introspection and learning who I am, what makes me, what makes me me, what makes me tick. And so while it's been a really um, challenging year, it's, it's been such a growth year. And I think always out of challenge, there is growth and there are things to learn about ourselves and the world around us. And so for me, it's really just been about embracing change, embracing uncertainty, um, looking for ways to be resilient and just showing up. Hmm. Yes, resiliency. That seems to be a word that we use a lot, isn't it? Oh, thanks, Jan, and you certainly are that. And what a great team you're leading over there. Well done. Thank you. <laughs> over to Bonnie. Um, Bonnie, share your biggest mistake and what you think you've learned from it. Well, I think that biggest mistake um, that I that I made in my career <clears throat> was not taking an opportunity. And I'll give you a little bit of uh, background on this. The organization I was working for at the time had a very robust succession management strategy. But the uh, individuals that uh, were in the organization had to put their hands up to say that they wanted to be part of the succession involved. I knew that it involved Fraser for 13 weeks for the advanced management program. And 
I knew that it involved taking uh, new assignments around. I, I decided I couldn't do that. And, you know, looking back now, I probably did make the right decision at the time, but it had a, an impact on my own development that was less than optimal. The um, three month program at Harvard would have been very good for me, um, even if I hadn't progressed up further in the organization, um, but it would have been very, very good for me. And, and taking uh, roles in other geographic locations would have been good for me. But at that particular point in my life, at that particular time, uh, I, I couldn't make that decision. And I, when I reflect on it, it was a mistake. It, it was clearly a mistake and it was not honoring my own abilities uh, to the extent that I could have. I think I could have done the three and a half months. I think I could have managed the geographic relocations and I just, I just wasn't up for it. So I made a mistake <laughs> and oh. I mean, it wasn't a disaster. I mean, my career flourished and I, I was just fine. But uh, if I look back on it now, um, it, it would have been, uh, that's a risk I just couldn't take at the time. And did you have, at the time, was there, and maybe you don't need to share this if it's too personal, was there something specific that you felt was holding you back or did you know where it was coming from? Well, I, I thought it would be too disruptive to my personal life. Oh, I see. And without even pushing my partner around, I, I didn't even discuss it with him. You know, okay. I just, I made that decision. Uh, I just thought it, it I, I just took it off the table before it even got on the table. I see. And uh, it was a mistake. I mean, I should have at least had that discussion, hmm. you know. I should have carried that forward, but I had that reticence and I didn't do it. So, so I didn't end up being the CEO and, hmm. you know, that would have been the pathway uh, to that type of role. Mm -hmm. And I cut myself off. Mm -hmm. And if you were, I guess, how old were you at that time, Bonnie? Oh, uh, what would I have been? I would have been around 50 maybe around yeah. 50 yeah. yeah yeah young enough <laughs> you <Yeah>. know <laughs> so you know if a, if a woman asked me now if anybody man or woman asked me now about doing that I would encourage them to move heaven and earth to make it happen what an opportunity you know yeah. Yeah. And I didn't pass, and I didn't pass many opportunities up, but I did pass that one up. Well, good advice to all of us. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Bonnie. And Jennifer, can you share a story of when you had to overcome stereotypes and or adversity in the business that you were in? God, there's so many. <laughs> Bonnie and I have had horror stories about this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> in the energy industry and mining my whole career. But, you know, one comes to mind in particular, especially um, related to uh, the field, field staff, because, you know, one of the things the oil industry is getting better at now is attracting more women trades and, and operators into field locations. But um, at the time, so the, the, the story goes like this. My very first field assignment was to go to Devon, Alberta and support the H and be an HR manager for Devon, Camrose, Drayton Valley and Edson. Before thinking that, you know, males could rough it up with the operators and, you know, but this was the first time the company asked them to take me. And, um, so I got there and I was fighting an uphill battle. You know, I was a, a check. What, what could I do? And um, anyway, I worked really, really hard 
at, uh, you know, I drove around in, in operators' trucks. I got up in the middle of the night and went to the control room and talked to the operators. I, I went out in the field um, often and not just sat in the field office. And, and uh, you know, after two years, there, the foreman and the superintendent, um, I, I actually, my assignment was coming to an end and they said, Jen, we never ever thought that a woman could do this job. And I wasn't even like an operator. I was the HR person, you know, but, you know, we've now seen the light, you know, and this was like 1987. It's crazy. Like it was crazy. Um, anyway, you know, that story always sticks with me for a couple of reasons. One is that my male colleagues, before I got into that role, they knew I was going, said to me, you know, this is what you want to do. This is how you want to behave. You got to be careful about this guy. You gotta, like they had this whole script for how I should behave. And I didn't listen to them. And <laughs> I'm really glad I didn't, you know, I just, again, that notion of being your authentic self, mm -hmm. just bringing yourself to the table, best assignment I ever had. I love that job, that field mm -hmm. assignment. And that, that would be one for me where, you know, you don't impact, I mean, that was, I don't know, maybe 200 operators, but at least I helped to change the mind of maybe 200 operators. So that felt pretty good. Oh, that's a great story, Jen. Oh my gosh. I always loved the field operators. They were always so down to earth. <laughs> totally. Yeah. 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 Honest. You knew where they stood all the time. <laughs> Very direct. And I love that. Yeah, me too. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. And Shannon, what do you want other women, women to know about overcoming challenges? Well, I want, it's kind of what you want everyone to know that there's always, you know, my mom always used to say to me after a bad day, like the sun is going to rise again tomorrow. And I, those words have always stuck with me. And so, you know, about overcoming challenges is that we're all capable of, of coming through anything. I mean, this is, this is the beauty of, of, of I, I just think optimism and I think the beauty of hope as well. Um, but I think for when it comes to overcoming challenges, really looking to have a personal board of directors. This is something that I've applied in my life and it's been consistent in my life. And I think actually, Jen, you might have even been the one that's called it first for me, the personal board of directors. But I always had people around me. So when I couldn't, you know, make a decision on where I was going, or I, I needed somebody to push me, take me to that next step to overcome a challenge or to take on something new. Um, I always had a team of amazing people around me that I could go to and bounce ideas off of. And, you know, I think life is hard, um, but you said it earlier, like we get nowhere if we're alone. And so I just, for overcoming challenges, I would just say like, find, find who will lift you, find who will, you know, help you rise. And sometimes it's not always your mother because they love you no matter what you do, but it's good to find that unbiased opinion for people that can help you overcome things. So never feel that you have to go it alone, but staying optimism, uh, staying optimistic, I think is really important and just always looking for the hope. Oh, I love it. The hope. That's another good word. You've got all the good words today, Shannon. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I love it. And you know, so true. I feel the same. Uh, everyone has mentioned mentors here. And uh, that's what a lot of the Rotarians have been for me over the last 16 years. And they know who they are. I see a few of them on, on the screen now. And uh, they always, you're right, encouraged me to continue breaking open, go, go try harder, go bigger, try harder, <laughs> do other things. It's awesome. Thanks, Shannon. That's great. Bonnie, what would, what advice would you give? Now, I'm sorry, this is off script. It's coming from the chat room. What advice would you give a young woman coming out of university or college uh, and that first role, uh, corporate role for her? What, what advice would you give her? Are there are a few things that you'd like to share. Well, uh, coming out of university um, or coming out of college, um, of course, you, uh, you would want to be uh, somewhat careful about the organization you choose to move into. I think there are some organizations that are more conscious and um, um, are doing things actually in the whole diversity and inclusion area than others. 
And so if I were advising a young woman uh, coming out of school, I would say, look for one of those organizations and try to attach yourself in one of those uh, businesses. And, and typically, if an organization has a diversity and inclusion mandate, they will also have some form of mentorship programs. And so it's, they almost go hand in hand. If you've got that kind of awareness, you'll start to find ways to attach new employees, both men and women, to mentors uh, within the organization. But I think selecting an organization with that kind of sensitivity uh, would, be, would be the first advice that I would give. And then to access the um, programs that might be available within the organization. A lot of, of uh, men and women coming up through the university system and the college system now are already involved with mentorship programs because yeah. certainly U of C has a mentorship uh, program in the Haskane School and in some of the other uh, faculties as well. So uh, coming up and um, continuing to find people to mentor and, and sponsor you, I think is, uh, is critical. Mm -hmm. So true, I agree. Thank you, Bonnie. One Go other ahead. thing I would say, one other thing I would say to any young person starting out is you're smarter than you think you are. You're, you're stronger, you're more resilient, you have more capabilities than you yourself will recognize. And so when other people identify that in you and encourage you to take opportunities and take risks and try new things, listen to them. And, and take that advice. Hmm. People around you will see things in you that you won't see in yourself. We should have had that recorded. That's <laughs> awesome. That's very cool. Thank you so much, Bonnie. Great advice. Thank you. Jennifer, what would you say has been your biggest mistake in your career? Yeah, I think the biggest mistake I made um, in my career would, would be um, it's almost a philosophical one. I, uh, when I joined Exxon um, and Imperial Oil, those of you that know that company know that they, you know, they have a mold. They, uh, they actually talk about hiring virgins. And then what that means is, it, it, you know, seriously, it, it's, not a, it's not a parochialism. It's they want people right out of university so they can mold them in their own image. And, you know, when I came out of university, I, I thought, wow, like that's where I want to go because they're the best in the world and da, 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 da. And I think the biggest mistake I made the first five years or so I was there in their new grad program is that I tried to fit myself to that mold, you know, and, and I was miserable. Like I remember saying to my then boyfriend, now husband, um, you know, I don't think I could stay here. Like they just, you know, um, and, and to Bonnie's really good point, I had a fabulous mentor uh, there. His name is Leighton Fisher. Bonnie, I don't know if you remember Leighton, but you know, he was like, and Brian Hallamore, two scholar, you know, individuals that were there at the time. I remember going to them and saying, you know, I, I think I have to leave. And they were like, what? And, and, you know, I just told them, this is how I felt. And they said, well, no one's putting that on you, but yourself. And so, you know, just, you don't have to fit the mold. And if you don't end up staying here for life, which, you know, is like a sin because everybody <laughs> is there for life. It's okay, Jen. It's okay, you know. And uh, another friend of ours, a mutual friend of ours, Sue Lee, was also a mentor of mine. She said, "My God, Jen, just go do it. You know, <laughs> be who you are." And uh, and you know, I was much happier. I stayed for ten more years. I did end up leaving um, at year fifteen. But my mistake was is that, and you're young and impressionable. But my mistake was. I actually got sucked into that whole cult-like, you know, fit the mold thing. And, and by the way, I feel very blessed to have worked there. So I'm nothing against Imperial, fabulous company, but uh, 
that was my mistake. And, and to, to my younger self and to younger people, to Bonnie's question, I would say, you know, really think about the culture you're going into um, and, and test that culture before you go into it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, live. Is that going to allow me to bring my whole self to work every day? Because mm -hmm. um, you got to enjoy where you are. Yeah. If, yeah. If not, it's a chore. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And then we die early. No. Right. <laughs> yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. We must enjoy every day. I agree. That's awesome advice. Thank you so much, Jen. Thank you. Shannon, may I ask you what your greatest mistake was and what you learned from it? Well, mine was really similar to Jen's, but luckily I've made so many mistakes. I've got another one that I can talk about. <laughs> but I think, you know, one of the things like I've always been a disruptor and I've always been one that has challenged the status quo. And from the time that I was a kid, my parents would tell you that I was exhausting because I kept saying why I would just keep going like no answer was ever good enough. And I think the challenge with being that type of personality or when you're really trying to disrupt the status quo is you don't always know the politics around it. And I also think too, sometimes we get so attached to change and we see one path to change. And this is a maturity thing. This is something that I've grown into in myself um, and into my career, but knowing how to bring other people along with me, because sometimes you're sort of the first person out of the gates. You might see something, you try and change something, and then, you know, someone might pivot it a little bit and you're either accepting of that or not. And I would say early on in my career, I was really tied to the way I wanted to do things. And that held me back in, in many situations because we often talk about, you know, the importance of that first adopter, who's going to come alongside and with your ideas, because they're the ones that really actually make the idea hit sort of that grassroots, um, grassroots stage. And so I think for me, it was really learning how to be coachable. And I, and I don't know so much that, I mean, I made that mistake several times, I'll be totally honest. I still probably make that mistake because I get very passionate about what I'm doing. Um, but I think a lot of people, a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of innovators face that same dilemma. And it's just, and I know now from working with venture capitalists and angel investors or even entrepreneurs that it's so important to be coachable. And if we can't you know, support the entrepreneur and believe that they wanna hear ideas, often you won't even get the backing from a venture capital uh, fund because if you're not coachable, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a, you're off the table. So I think that was a mistake that I made several times uh, in my life and I'm hoping that I've uh, moved beyond that, but uh, it's, I would say it's, that's a, a learning journey for sure for me. Wow. Thank you so much for sharing that Shannon. Very good. Good advice. Thank you. Ladies, thank you so much for joining today. I think we're moving to uh, thanking you for joining us. And then I think there's going to be probably questions after from, from our, yes, okay, I'm getting the yes. <laughs> okay, so over to you, Matt, or who's doing it? Not sure. Yeah. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. Um, thank you, Catherine. Thank you. Okay, I think that it's to me to do the thank you. And actually, I think that a lot of the questions have been already answered, which has been fabulous. Um, but um, we close our meeting at 1.15, and then those of us who uh, can stay around do so. And if it's possible, oh, okay. Yeah, the view has changed. Um, if it's possible for the panelists and maybe Catherine too to stay on, then some of those questions could happen at that time. That would be an amazing opportunity. So first of all, I really do want to have a very, very so sincere thank you to Bonnie, Jennifer and Shannon. This was absolutely exceptional. And for all of us who still have a career or um, have children who have careers or know people. Um, these were really important life lessons that you shared with us. Thank you for being so authentic and so honest. Um, and I am so delighted that this session has been recorded and will be on our website because what that means is all of us can reach out to people who might learn and just incredible learnings from what the three of you have said. 
So thank you very much for your time and your and your honesty with us. And Catherine, I have to say, the questions were just absolutely excellent. And of course, your warm support of the panelists is just your trademark. And um, it makes them feel more comfortable and more giving. So um, you did a, a really lovely job. So thank you very much. It's a, it's a gift for our club and for all those who will be able to see the recording of it afterwards. So thank you very much indeed. And I will hand it back, I think, to Jennifer. And I should also say thank you to Maxine for organizing. <laughs>